Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and another video. You join me in the workshop where we're about to start the reassembly of the Honda Z50 engine. So you saw in our last video, we did a strip down video. We took the engine off the frame, we stripped the frame, we completely nut and bolt with the engine, got its pieces. I put a big list together, ordered a load of parts and sent the cases off to be blasted. We've had them back and they look great. We've got a box of bits ready to go and we're gonna start rebuilding this engine and putting it back to the way it should have been when it came out of the factory. So let's take a look at this lovely table of parts. Um, these are the cases which have had the biggest transformation so far. We've had all of these cases, uh, the two center cases, cylinder head and outside cases, vapor blasted. Um, that's pretty much glass bead and water. Um, they've come up lovely. With that as well, we've got new gearbox bearings in both halves and two needle bearings in each half as well. So new bearings all round. They look absolutely mint. There's a few scuffs and scrapes, but overall it's come out really nice. So we'll be working on these today. Down here, I've got my box of bits. So we labeled everything and bagged it up, kept the dust off them, they've been cleaned. And we also have a box here full of new parts. We've got gaskets, seals, <laughs> wood rough keys, piston, the lot. So we've got a new barrel for it and we're gonna be putting that all together in today's video. So guys, the time has come to finally start putting this engine back together. Um, it's fresh, it's clean, we've got all our parts and just want to get cracking with it. So as you saw, I've got all my bits labelled up. So we start with the gearbox. Um, the process for this sort of build is I've bagged it and we're going to clean it as we go. So pull all the parts out, give them the once over and then as you can see here, we're just going to Breaking clutch, cleaning them all, get all the old crap off them. There was a lot of water in this engine, so I just want to make sure each part is squeaky clean. But back out onto the bench, we pull the kickstart mechanism out and we start looking at how this goes back together. Obviously, it was a few weeks, so we've got the manual with us, we've got some fresh oil, and we're going to start sliding this together. Starting with the oil pump, which slides in, and then next up, the kickstart. With the kickstart mechanism in the case, we throw some wood underneath and grab the gearbox and drop that in. That all kind of goes in as one unit and you have the blocks underneath so your output shaft where your sprocket goes has somewhere to fall through. Um, following that, you get the crank in so that drops straight into some sort of cast inserts in the case. So that's a really nice fit. And then we just give it a quick spin to make sure everything moves smoothly. Just good practice as you go through the engine build to make sure nothing's binding up. But that's the bottom end really. Um, it's pretty simple once you've done this a few times and then you get that all in and you can start looking at putting your top case on. So we get a bit of oil, lube up the bearings and kind of just get it in all the shafts so we know when this case goes on, it's not gonna bind up. Um, grab a new gasket. So we got a whole new gasket set, which is essential for these rebuilds, and that goes straight on. You can see that being a one-piece gasket, you've got to cut around the connecting rod, but that's no big deal. Once that's cut, you can grab the case and cross your fingers and try and get this on. You can see you've got a lot of shafts going through different bearing faces, so you've just got to take your time, drop it on slowly, and then work it round. The biggest resistance you'll find is the dowels and those mating with the other side of the case. So it's important just to keep an eye on everything, make sure it all still moves smoothly and you'll be okay. Uh, you get that together, new bolts. I've got new bolts all round for this. I've had the cases done. I could have refurbished the old ones, but I thought, you know what, let's get some new hardware in it. Fresh bolts all round, it makes a big difference. So with the bolts out on the table, we start working our way around the engine, just making sure we work out where each length goes. In hindsight, I should have really marked out the different lengths for each area of the engine, but hey ho, we work it out and 
we start to tighten down these bolts so you can see we're kind of working our way around the case making sure that we evenly apply pressure so we don't warp the case or pinch the gasket in any funny way but we get that together and the torque wrench comes out I can really recommend a smaller torque wrench like this for these small engines um, I also have a larger one but I normally found that you'd never get the low torques that these smaller bolts and things require so that is dead handy to have with a few bolts torques or the first of many we start on the gear shift side so this is kind of your selector where you go from your actual foot action to the internal rotation to select your gears so it's not too bad to be honest all of these parts come away in sort of sub assemblies so as long as you're careful taking it apart and to keep everything bagged up you shouldn't have any issue putting it back together but a few more torque specs to achieve and then we go on to the kickstart mechanism so now the second case is on the spring and stop can be pushed into place and that slides nicely over a spline on that shaft so that goes on and then you finish it off with a circlip just to stop that moving or lifting next in the line of things to do is the oil pump side so the oil pumps on these things are tiny as you can see it is literally minuscule but at the same time how much oil pressure and oil does a 50cc need so we fit it on and we drop a bit of oil into the pump so it's kind of not primed but there's some fluid in there before we first move this engine over but gasket goes on the oil pump and then this top plate that holds it all together um, once again torque, torque wrench comes out and we torque these down to spec and then I get the seal kit out we grease up slash oil a seal and push that straight into the case with that kind of set in um, you can get seal pressing tools my preference is to get a socket and just tap the seal home as long as you pick the right size you won't really have any issues and we do the same thing on the output shaft so where the sprocket goes another seal there so at this point we were making really good progress so we started to move towards the drive side of the engine um, I actually found at this point that we had an issue with the engine so I put this final timing gear on and then worked out that the engine was not shifting so you're getting two of the gears but the third one wasn't selectable and it came down to a tiny pin on the selector shaft so push that straight in we got an order from CMSL and it started working as it should have done so it was a bit of a setback but it really kind of emphasizes the importance of checking your engine and making sure the gearbox works before you continue on because imagine building this thing getting it back in the bike and then going to shift and missing that so you can see here we kind of spin the engine over click through the gears you can really see the selector shaft working and spinning that barrel um, those pins are there because it allows the kind of the gear arm to move the barrel around so dead important and a good thing caught it delayed it a bit but I'd rather catch it now than down the line but without the way we continue forward we get the other timing gear on or sorry timing gear drive gear the front one that comes straight out of the crank and we move on to the clutch so before I installed this, it was fully stripped down. I cleaned all the plates up because there's a lot of water in this engine. I soaked all the plates in oil, built it back up, and you can see here we're just pushing it straight on. So, pretty easy. You've got a main nut and a lock nut, got some new ones of them, and stuck this thing back together. Let me correct myself there. By lock nut, I meant lock washer. So, you put your spring washer on the star castle nut goes on and you fold the tabs up just so it keeps it in place but this is where the big torque wrench comes out so we torque that right down and then like you see here we get the punch and we're just knocking these tabs over so there's no way this thing can back off pretty standard on mo motorbike engines but we had a new one on there just for good practice and then the final few covers go on for the clutch so this goes on and a small assembly which is held together and as per the manual it recommends you cover this sort of ball bearing mechanism in grease and that holds it in place whilst you wrestle the case on but case goes on 
and then we do the same thing we've done the whole build struggle to find where each bolt goes but we work our way around figure it out and get them all done so with the clutch drive side done we move to the cam chain or cam chain tensioner which is a small assembly um, dead simple um, it's a sprung load assembly but before we do that we start with a new cam chain um, this costs literally I think £12 and it's a DID spec one so it's a no brainer to put a new one in we've gone this far with the engine so I thought let's actually just do it all properly but cam chain mechanism goes in you can see it's a pivoting arm so you've got a spring at the bottom and a winding lock and as you wind this arm in you apply tension to the chain so it's all adjusted manually and you set it and lock it in place but really simple and it looks pretty robust with a quick clean up we look to finalize this lower area so on top of your cam chain tensioner you have the ignition so this is your state room points so that goes on as one unit and screws in it's really important to focus on getting the seal in properly so that whole stator separates a wet and dry side so remember to put the seal in there otherwise you will have problems um, on top of that goes the flywheel and that is pretty much the bottom end all done so you've just seen us put this bottom end together and it's all gone pretty smoothly we had a few issues with bearings which i discussed at the start and yeah a shift pin which was missing which was not ideal but things happen and we've resolved them uh, what's left to do is that case is going to come off and get painted in the factory color and then we're going to move on to the top end of the engine so bottom end's done work our way up barrel cylinder head get started on that so before we get started i kind of want to give a bit of background to the original engine issue i had and what i found and how the issue yeah i've had and how i've resolved it so obviously if you watch the first part of this series we noticed that the engine had really poor compression and we stripped it all down we sent it for blasting and what I found was that once the head had been blasted, as I'll stick on screen now, the actual dome of the head was heavily pitted, including around the valve seat. So I think that it was leaking through there. Um, it was covered in carbon buildup, and that may have kind of helped a little bit creating a seal because it was filling it, but either way, it was leaking and it was no good. Um, I searched low and high to find someone to remachine these. I bought new valves, but due to that size of a 20 mil exhaust valve and a 23 mil intake valve nobody would touch it like literally no one wanted to touch it it was too small the tournament wouldn't do it and yeah i was pretty stuffed really i was thinking about lapping them but there was no way you can see on the screen now there's no way you're going to lap that out without just creating more damage um so yeah this project kind of went on hold for a few weeks as i spoke to people called people up um i was very lucky to find someone um at a company called two wheel restorations uh Cliff there has helped me out big time and he managed to, he had a 50, an old 50 head on the shelf and I've sent him a new set of valves and he has blasted it, rebuilt it and you can see right now on the screen a comparison side by side how much better it is. So this is what's been holding the build up and I'm hoping it, this is going to be what cures the poor compression issue. But yeah, it's actually a lot harder to find a 50cc head or even get one fixed than I thought it would be. So for anyone looking or thinking about doing these, it's one thing to think about. Rest of the engine, no problems with getting parts. The cylinder head, a bit of a nightmare. And for reference, if I didn't get a 50, this would be going to a 70cc. So the 70cc head and piston barrel from an ST70 all fit on this, but I'm not gonna ride this particularly on the road. It's gonna get ridden around the garden and it's gonna be more of an ornament. So I wanted the 50cc look, but at the same time, I want it to run well and function as it should. But that's a bit of background. I hope that gives you an insight into why this project was delayed slightly, but we'll continue the build and get the top end back together.
So this video is turning to a bit of a long one, but I really want to capture what's happened, good and bad. And talking of that, we've got some bad news. So you saw from the video that we've been building this engine up, getting it all back together. We had a few issues with the cylinder head. We got them sorted. I've put the full engine together at the top end, got it all together. And then I've been slowly turning over by hand and it's hit a very tough spot. It almost felt like something was clashing or hitting and I've dug right into it. I was, I thought the time was out, but the time was correct. And I've looked into it and I want to show you what's gone wrong and it's not ideal. So walking through the workshop, you can see we've got the engine here stripped down once together, now apart with no piston in it. And if you look over here, we have got two pistons. So this was the original one that came out. Um, don't think it was an original Honda piston, but it was the original one. And then you've got our new piston, which I bought. Um, all look good, completely standard size because I had a new barrel. But actually, these pistons aren't the same. And here's why. So if you take a closer look at these pistons, um, you can see they've got two cutouts. So obviously intake and exhaust. On the old one, you can see that the lip where the valve sits runs right to the edge and get in focus. This gap here between the valve, where the edge of the valve sits and the top of the piston ring is tiny. Over to this one, that gap is non-existent. So it almost looks like the whole valve relief hasn't been cut slash cast correctly. So actually, I was having a small interference between the valve and the piston. And I tell you what, it's very lucky that I checked this because if I'd gone to kick this engine fully back in the bike, this would have been a nightmare. It would have run because it wasn't a massive interference, but it would have been enough to do some damage. So bottom of the line, I'm very frustrated, very annoyed because this piston is supposed to be a direct replacement for the Honda Z50. So yeah. what? So the saga will continue. I'm going to go back to where I bought the piston from and ask for a new one uh, replacement that's correct there's no reason that should be wrong I've checked the specs it should exactly fit that engine and it just looks like the head's wrong I don't know why but something is definitely wrong so as we stand now um, we have no piston the engines back apart and we need to in a new piston rings all that and then we will flick back to it being a final engine where we will wrap this up and get this engine ticked off and put to the side but until then, we're on hold for a new piston. So, a few days later, and I have a new piston. This, so I spoke to the guys who sold me the original ones, kind of sent some pictures, we had a good discussion. Um, kind of couldn't work out why it happened from my side. I don't know, have I missed something? Am I being stupid? Um, if so, please highlight it to me, because I've been thinking about this way too much. But we have got a lovely OEM piston and valuable lesson learned. I probably should have got one of these at the start. So as I showed the comparison before, um, that was the OEM one that came out of it. I tried to put a reproduction one in, which in theory should work, but actually doesn't. I'll put a side by side on the screen and we've gone back to an OEM one, which is identical to before. So new piston, new rings, Let's try this all again. Let's throw it back together and hopefully we should have no issues, no clashes, um, and we should be good to go. So, second time lucky, can we get this engine back together? We've got the new piston, as said, we've got the rings. We've done this once before and we can do it again. We get this all slotted back together and yeah, just build this top end up and hopefully it's for the final time. Also, I wanted to include the side case prep so these are vapor blasted, but actually the factory color is a Honda silver. So I've gone ahead, ordered the matching paint and got this sprayed up. Um, makes a big difference, kind of splits the engine in half rather than all being the same shade of gray. But a bit of masking tape and some good prep and this came out really well. Um, I was dead happy of that and it added to the finishing touches on these engines. Along with that, we've got some polished tappet covers. So I polished these up myself. And finally, we've got the side case, which has been polished and the Honda painted black. But this all adds to the kind of final restored effect that I'm going for.
As you can see guys, we have come to the end of this engine refresh rebuild project. This is the first thing done in a big list of many other things to get this bike back and restored, but it's a good thing to get ticked off. You can see we came across a multitude of issues, uh, cylinder heads, pistons not working, but as we stand now, the engine is all back together. The one thing pending is the clutch adjuster. I need a new bolt for that, but aside from that, it is all together and I must say it looks absolutely brilliant. I'll stick some um, close-ups in now whilst I'm chatting. But yeah, the engine's been gone through thoroughly. We've rebuilt everything. We've got new piston, new rings, new barrel, anything that needed changing we've done, and we essentially have a like new engine. So really excited to get this running. Obviously we've got the frame to do. So next up, next video, we're gonna start on the frame. We've got a few things to repair, some things to machine, some things to weld. So we're gonna get all that done and then yeah, keep progressing with this project. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's been a detailed one. I've hopefully I've covered a, a good variety of things, but like I say, drop a like if you enjoyed the video. A subscribe goes a long way as well. So really appreciate that. But until the next video, which will hopefully be sooner rather than later, uh, take it easy and I'll see you then.